Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So after the Kirtan Mela and so many wonderful verses on the holy name we are back to the regular system of Srimad Bhagavatam consecutively and this is seventh canto chapter two Rani Kasipu, the king of demons, text number 12. Yatra yatra tvijagavo Vedavana shrama kriya Tam tam janapadam yata Sandipa yati vrishchata Yatra yatra dvijaga bhoho Deiravana shrama kriya Tam tam janapadam yata Sandipa yata vrishchata Yatra yatra dvijaga bhoho Vedavana Shrama Kriyaha Tam Tam Janapadham Yata Sandipa Yata Vrishchata Yatra Yatra Wherever Dvija The Brahmanas Gava The protected cows Veda The Vedic culture Varna Ashrama Of the Aryan civilization Of the four Varnas And four Ashramas Kriyaha the activities, tam tam, that, janapada, to the city 
or town. Yata, go. Sandipayata, set fire. Prikshata, cut down all the trees. So we're hearing from uh, Hirani Kashipu. He's instructing his assistants, his servants, to cause havoc on the earth planet. Immediately, go wherever there is good protection for the cows and brahmanas, and wherever the Vedas are studied in terms of the Vanashram principles. Set fire to those places and cut from the root the trees there, which are the source of life. Purpur, by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The picture of proper human civilization is indirectly described here. In a perfect human civilization, there must be a class of men fully trained as perfect brahmanas. Similarly, there must be kshatriyas to rule the country very nicely according to the injunctions of the shastras. And there must be vaishas who can protect the cows. The word gava indicates that cows should be given protection. Because the Vedic civilization is lost, cows are not protected, but instead indiscriminately killed in slaughterhouses. Such are the acts of demons. Therefore, this is a, demi this is a demoniac civilization. The Vanashram Dharma mentioned here is essential for human civilization. Unless there is a Brahmana to guide, a Kshatriya to rule perfectly, and a perfect Vaishna, Vaishya to produce food and protect the cows, how will people live peacefully? It is impossible. Another point is that trees should be given protection. During its lifetime, a tree should not be cut for industrial enterprises. In Kali Yuga, trees are indiscriminately and un unnecessary cut for industry. In particular, for paper mills that manufacture a profuse quantity of paper for the publication of demoniac propaganda, nonsensical literature, huge quantities of newspapers, and many other paper products. This is a sign of a demoniac civilization. The cutting of trees is prohibited unless necessary for the service of Lord Vishnu. Yagnartha Kamano Nyatra Lokayam Kandamandanaha. Work done as a sacrifice for Lord Vishnu must be performed, otherwise, work binds one to this material world. But if the paper mills stop producing paper, one may argue how can our ISKCON literature be published? The answer is that the paper mills should manufacture paper only for the publication of ISKCON literature because ISKCON literature is published, is published for the service of the Supreme Lord Vishnu. This literature clarifies our relationship with Lord Vishnu and therefore the publication of ISKCON literature is the performance of Jagya. Yagnartha kamano yakta lokoyam kamabandhanaha. Yagna must be performed as indicated by the superior authority. The cutting of trees simply to manufacture paper for the publication of unwanted li literature is the greatest sinful act. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kedam Mayam Dadati Swam Padantika Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Kadadhar Shivasari Ghor Bhaktivin Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Ram Hare Ram Hare Ram Ram Hare The Prabhupada writes in Srimad Bhagavatam in the 19th chapter of the first canto that human life comprises three aspects that are required to fulfill all the needs both spiritually and materially. He mentions Brahminical culture or that culture which gives 
direction to society. <laughs> Otherwise, society has no direction. <laughs> and Brahminical culture is based on Shastric evidence, Shastric guidance. So Brahminical culture, which is the foundation for the Vanashram system. The system of the four orders and four uh, spiritual is for material activities, for varnas. He also mentions cow protection, taking care of cows. Cows are the basis of agriculture. And as Prabhupada mentions, by taking care of cows, they can feed the entire human civilization. And then the last thing he mentioned is God consciousness. So these three things, Brahminical culture, cow protection, and God consciousness make up human society or make up a progressive human society. Where do we see that today? Of course, in our ISKCON society, this is our focus to develop these three main aspects which are the foundation for all material stability, happiness, success, and ultimately the process of spiritual pro progress to lead to the goal of life, which is prema pumartha maha, to, to engage in devotional service and to love the Supreme Personality of Godhead through that devotional service. So Prabhupada makes this point in this particular uh, purport that it's essential to establish Van Ashram system, the four Varnas, the four Ashram. But then when Prabhupada first came in 1966, and for many years after, until 1973, Prabhupada said, not possible. Society is too topsy-turvy. We should simply distribute transcendental knowledge and spread the glories of the Hare Krishna mantra everywhere. So Prabhupada began his movement with that focus, giving knowledge, transcendental knowledge, and holy books, holy name. But then, in 1974, Prabhupada changed his way of preaching, or not changed it, kept it, but added something. He said, now it is important that we establish this Vanashram. Vanashram is essential. And devotees are asking, well, Prabhupada, you know, the, the Vanashram is material. But Prabhupada said, no, within our society, in order to engage and first to evaluate and to engage devotees according to their nature, train according to that nature, evaluate and then train, and then engage them in devotional service, which is not, which is Vanashram, but as Prabhupada gives it the qualification or the consider it's Daivi. Van Ashram, spiritual Van Ashram. So the devotees questioned that. Prabhupada's change. And Prabhupada responded, it's not so easy to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> if it was, why are so many of the devotees falling down? Why are they falling down in their devotional service? Now we have to establish this Van Ashram college and educate according to evaluation and nature. When Narada Muni saw little Dhruva Maharaj doing austerities and penances, such a five-year-old boy in the forest, he started to come and preach. And he started to say, you know, why are you taking revenge? You know, it's not so important. You're just a young boy. And so just go back and you can perform all these austerities later in life. And your, your attitude is not right. You should develop brahminical qualities, humility, tolerance, forgiveness. 
Prahlad didn't, uh, Dhruva Maharaj didn't want to hear that. Prabhupada says, the statements of Dhruva Maharaj indicate that unless a child is trained according to his tendency, there is no possibility of developing his particular spirit. And then Prabhupada goes on to say, it is the duty of the spiritual master or teacher to observe the psychological movement of a particular boy and train him in his particular occupational duty. Dhruva Maharaj, having been trained in the Kshatriya spirit, would not accept Brahminical philosophy. And Prabhupada started the movement by emphasizing the cult Brahminical culture, training devotees to engage in devotional service, following the regulative principles, chanting the holy names, learning the scriptures, and developing those qualities that are conducive to the mode of goodness, which are the Brahminical qualities. But then, he wanted us to develop that system where accordingly, a devotee could be understood and engaged according to... And Prabhupada says, when one is engaged according to their nature, they're enthusiastic. They will perform tremendous service and never be discouraged by difficulties. Sometimes we see that in our society. Devotees are not properly engaged. It's a question that comes up quite often like that. And we see because of that, not what we say proper, or the evaluation that brings about the understanding of how to engage. It's not, the service is not so important. Krishna doesn't need our server. But we want the devotees to become Krishna conscious. So what, how to train, first evaluate and train devotees according to their nature and then engage them in devotional service. So Prabhupada in 1974 gave a morning walk conversation in Vrindavan, which was one of the longest morning walks he ever gave, over an hour, he spoke about the importance of developing this, what we say, Vanashram sister, but he qualified it, Daivi Vanashram. Daivi Vanashram. And then Prabhupada spoke, and he said, we, first we need to establish Brahminical culture within our society. The leaders should cultivate the mood of qualities of Brahm and then train the other devotees accordingly. First evaluation and accordingly. And that means, Prabhupada said, then the Brahmins have to learn all the different activities of the, all the other Varnas, such as taking care of cows, uh, taking care of agriculture, performing, of course, deity worship is Brahminical culture. Um, organization, management, protection. And he's speaking to some of the leaders at that time. And the question came back, but Prabhupada, does that mean the Brahmins have to learn all the different uh, varnas, the different occupations? No, Prabhupada said, as a group, you should all know and train or begin a program of training in order to help devotees become fixed in their Krishna consciousness according to nature like that. Dhruva Maharaj, this is the prime example where Narada Muni is in speaking about qualities of a Brahman, but Dhruva doesn't want to hear it. <laughs> he wants that kind of advice that can help fulfill, of course, he wanted material desires. He wanted fulfill. He wanted revenge. Of course, that's material, and sometimes it's even seen as as sinful. But ultimately, he approached the supreme personality of Godhead for that. And because he did, ultimately he got purified from that desire, and ultimately became a pure devotee of the Lord. So this. Van Ashram system, Prabhupada began the movement 
holy books, holy name. And then after that he established deity worship. Very elaborate, very precise types of deity worship and open temples all around the world. Our ISKCON society is one of the most, we might say, popular spiritual movements that worship Radha and Krishna all around the world. Practically in every country of the world, there's very nice deity worship. This is the glory of ISKCON. And Srila Prabhupada wanted that. And then he wanted to train, and first bring in through preaching many, many persons, give them a chance to engage in devotional service, and teach them or engage them in developing those qualities. So he established a whole system of initiation. But when Prabhupada was towards the end, in 1977, uh, is actually a beautiful, a very interesting room conversation with Hari Sari Prabhu and Sats Rup Maharaj, where Prabhupada really, really emphasizes the importance of developing the Van Ashram system. And he says that on our farms we can establish this. And this, if we can do this, the whole human society will change. Well, Prabhupada said, I have finished 50%. Sometimes people say uh, 70%. But Prabhupada actually said, 50% of my movement I haven't been able to finish. So he wanted this Van Ashram, Daivi Van Ashram, not just material Van Ashram or what we see the caste system, which is a corrupted form of Van Ashram, but actual Van Ashram. And so he wanted these Van Ashram's educational institutions to help bring about this culture of Brahmins, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas. And of course, Sudras would be the assistants or develop trades and crafts. But Kshatriyas are so important to the fundamental practice of our ISKCON society, having tr persons trained in that particular service for protection, for organization. I, in 19, I think it was 1976, Prabhupada was in New Vrindavan. And there was an evening darshan. It was outside um, one devotee's lawn. And, and many of the devotees came to hear Prabhupada. And there was one... Jai Sisi Radha Madhava Asta Saki Ki Jai. There was one uh, young lady there, devotee, and it was in June. So June is kind of like in America, it could be a little cool sometimes. And this was in the evening. And uh, she's like this, she's cold. And Prabhupada sees that. And Prabhupada says to her, you're cold. And she says, oh no, Prabhupada. Prabhupada turns to the temple president. They won't say anything, but it's your duty to make sure they get what they need. Prabhupada was emphasizing it's up to the leaders to make sure the devotees have what they need to engage in devotional service and take care of their, their needs in order to practice devotional service. He says it's not that the devotees have to come forward. Leaders have to evaluate and observe how the devotee is doing and what do they need in order to practice devotional service. So Prabhupada showed that by his own example. And there are many, many other examples also. And so for leadership, organization, there's three things. Protection. Prabhupada said if we get attacked... And the Kshatriyas should come out and fight. We have to fight sometimes to protect our society if we are unnecessarily or even attacked. So therefore devotees have to have some type of training to, in protection. 
And Kshatri also means expert in organization, how to organize things in such a way. And of course, welfare. Welfare means the protection aspect comes into the welfare aspect. What is that welfare? Here, Harani Kashipu wants to destroy Brahminical culture. And he says, just cut down all the trees and burn the hermitage, just kill the cows. And so it is essential that five aspects that are mentioned in the Shastras are given complete protection. Cows are mentioned here, Brahmins, women, children, old persons. A society that does not do that is considered not to be a human society. Very strong, but Prabhupada is giving the understanding what is both the material foundation for the welfare of society which will allow a person to practice Krishna consciousness without any unnecessary difficulties. So this is where the Van Ashram sister comes in. It provides education, training, and what we say resources for the entire culture of Krishna consciousness worldwide. Like that. So this is what this particular verse is saying is that Harani Kashipu knows that by destroying Brahminical culture, by causing havoc to that foundation, which is the essence of spiritual culture, then everything else will fall. People will become, as he says, unhappy and give up everything. Prabhupada goes on to say, it's interesting, he gives a long, very long uh, evaluation or explanation on the importance of trees. How important a tree is. We find in throughout our Vedic literature the importance of trees. As the, uh, we say, they give ambience to the earth, they provide food, they provide shelter, they provide a balance within nature. And a tree is seen as the most tolerant. So, so much importance is given on trees here. And Prabhupada says, in today's society, what do they do with the trees? They cut them down for nonsensical literature or, let me see, sinful types of propaganda. And then the question comes up in the purport. Prabhupada used a little rhetorical. But if we, if we stop cutting all trees, what about our literature in Krishna consciousness? How can we publicize our literature? Prabhupada says, but for glorification of the Lord and propagation of spiritual principles, this can be done. I heard an inter just to give a, a comparison analogy on this particular point, I heard an interesting discussion with Prabhupada. And Prabhupada's talking to this one interviewer and they're talking about today's pollution in society and then the subject comes up how the automobiles are so pollutant that you know it's destroying the ozone and it's causing you know intoxication people are becoming sick because of this and so much congestion and Prabhupada said yes yeah, because it's all being used for sense gratification but if we use the cars to drive in order to preach Krishna consciousness, there'll be no pollution. So I was thinking, hmm, <laughs> can't figure that one out. <laughs> but Prabhupada has this spiritual insight that, and it, it's, it's in line with the principle that if anything used in devotional service is only, only beneficial. It's only beneficial. So Prabhupada makes that point here. And he goes on to say, in relationship to the trees, very strong, he says at the very last line, the publication of, or manufacturing a pa paper for the publication of unwanted literature. He doesn't say great, he says the greatest sinful activity. In other words, he's giving 
how much sinful activity is being propagated simply in the name of this, this uh, civilization just to satisfy people's desire for sense gratification. The compassion of a Vaishnava doesn't want to see or becomes what we say unhappy when he sees other living entities exploited simply for the selfish interests of a few people. So this particular verse in purport is very fundamental to under our understanding that the foundation of our society and our propagation of our society is to develop that those qualities which are foundation in to Brahminical culture and preach Krishna consciousness everywhere. It's interesting in the seventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, eleventh uh, chapter, verses eight through twelve, Narada Muni speaks about what are those qualities and characteristics that are essential for developing Vanarshram. Srimad Bhagavatam, there's at least, there's four chapters on the different varnas and different ashramas. And in the, Shri, in the 11th canto, Krishna speaks two chapters on Vanarshram. And in this particular verse, it explains that there are 30 qualities that are foundational for human society. Outside of these 30 qualities, there's no question of human society. 21 are characteristics of qualities such as charity, nonviolence, mercifulness, bathing twice a day, distributing prasadam, food to both animals and human beings. Um, and it goes on. There's many others. And then... It's mentioned the nine uh, limbs or angas of devotional service. So this particular verse spoken by Narada Muni is what is the focus for developing Vanarshram. Because unless those qualities develop, her people cannot come to the stage of Brahminic or a Brahminical, what we say, activities. To have, a, to have a thread, a Brahmin thread, doesn't make one a Brahmin. I'm, thinking, oh, I'm a Brahmin, I have a Brahmin thread. Brahmin means qualities. And what are the qualities of a Brahmin? Patan, patan, yajan, yanya, dana, pratigiva. To know the Shastras, to teach the Shastras, to worship the deity and to help others engage and guide them in deity worship, to give in charity and to receive charitable gifts. These are the six activities of the Brahman. But then in the Bhagavatam, I'm sorry, both in Bhagavatam, yes, and also in Bhagavad Gita are what are the characteristics and qualities. So the process of developing Vanarshram is the process of both education and developing these qualities which are foundation to the execution of devotional service. If we are still attached to the activities that we perform, we are still on the level of rajas. The mode of passion is attachment to the results of the activities for the sake of enjoyment. That is below the activities of devotional service. Therefore, coming to the mode of goodness means coming to the stepping stone which is the foundation for engaging properly in devotional service or developing those qualities. We can't really chant the holy names of the Lord effectively and become purified unless one is culturing those qualities in the mode of goodness. Simultaneously culture, simultaneously practicing the process of bhakti yoga. Like that. So that's why Vanarshram is important because how it helps to evaluate a person, engage them in devotional service where they can cultivate both education and the qualities necessary in devotional service. So this is a big topic, I know, and it's going on, we're discussing this throughout our society. 
but it's actually the stage where our movement will become what we say successful in bringing Krishna consciousness around the world. Chant the holy names of the Lord, distribute prasadam everywhere, teach people the importance of Krishna consciousness, and also simultaneously uh, give them a chance to engage in devotional service. Okay, so this is... I think I'm supposed to stop at quarter two, but we can take any questions if there's one or two questions. Anyone? Yes. Can you, you can speak loud, I, I'll just repeat what you say. The purport? Ta yeah, the society is topsy-turvy, yes. Prabhupada wanted... Yeah. Hare Krishna. Right. Hmm. Hare Krishna. Okay. If we uh, try to push Varnashram system uh, where it is like uh, it becomes like disrespectful uh, sometimes, uh, then uh, like uh, it, it is like kind of pushing. It's pu forcing, you're saying. Yeah, forcing. Uh, and uh, the two of the two parts, like God consciousness and Varnashram. If we have God consciousness, automatically there will be Varnashram because uh, Krishna consciousness is all successful. And uh, there was Varnashram and no God consciousness and still we lost it. So this disrespect part, you, uh, it goes like against the Krishna consciousness uh, principle, you know. We're like, not going to set up material Varnashram, it's Daivi Varnashram. That means devotional service is the fundamental activity of those engaged. But at the same time, to engage persons according to their... First, to evaluate and to engage according to their nature. When Prabhupada... I mentioned that. When Prabhupada was asked, why should we do this, using your same argument, that Prabhupada said, it's not so easy. Why are devotees falling down? Now we have to establish Vanarsha. Why are they falling down? So, and then of course in 1977, Prabhupada laid out the whole plan. But it's not material Vanarshram. And we're not going to go into society to teach that. We're going to do it within our own society. And once we can build our own society, it can spread outward into the, as an example for the rest of society. But Krishna consciousness is the activity of the devotee. Hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord are the fundamental process of bhakti yoga. That is foremost and fundamental. But devotees are hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord are being, at the same time, not without proper training and education, it's hard to stay fixed in the process of hearing and chanting. Because we spend a lot of our time doing activities. When Prabhupada started a movement, he was using whoever could come forward, engaging them accordingly. And he said, just do the service and you'll develop the, uh, you know, you'll develop the talent, the, the ability. Krishna will empower you. But after a while, Prabhupada changed. You can, you can follow the history. And in 1974, he really 
laid out a whole plan for training and education like that. So it's not material vanarsham, it's spiritual vanarsham. We are devotees. We're not gopi bhatte patakamalayor, dasa dasa, anudas. Lord Chaitanya says we're not Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, Brahmachari, Grihasta, Vanaprasta, Sanyas. These are all external. All four of them are external. Our real actual identity and the activities based on identity is that we are spiritual, part and parcel of Krishna, and we engage in devotional service. But unless we actually educate and engage people accordingly, we will see what we have in our society is called the revolving door policy. People come, they stay for a year, two years, three years. After four or five years, where do they go? Not properly engaged. Not giving the chance for the education and the training that they need. So we don't force it, but it actually becomes fundamental for one's spiritual practice. Shouldn't we be like uh, giving this facility to others, but for ourselves we should be like, what Shikshashtrakam says, like the only uh, necessity for chanting is like, uh, the quality is like uh, respect, tolerance, humility, but not, not anything else. That should be our goal for ourselves and we yeah, provide the Varnashram for yeah. others. Cultivate those qualities, yeah. But if you're not engaged in devotional service, you can't cultivate those qualities separate. They're not separate. They're part of your activities, whatever you do. You can't, be, you can't say, well, I'm going to sit and chant Hare Krishna in a humble state of mind and the rest of the day at something else. <laughs> no, it just doesn't work. <laughs> This has to be a 24-hour process of cultivation of those qualities that are conducive to approaching Krishna in His holy name. Okay. Any ladies? Any questions from the ladies? Wow. Okay. Mataji? Yeah. You can pass the microphone over. My experience is that <clears throat> our natures are so strong oh. that if we don't use them in the service of Krishna, we're going to have to use them. And you're saying that we'll naturally use them in the mode of passion, maybe even worse, if we're not trained to utilize them in the mode of goodness. Right. So I don't see that it's an option because that's part of the reason why people fall down is you have to use, utilize your yeah. nature. Yeah. This, I think the example is Dhruva Maharaj. <laughs> Yeah, we had our natures are Chaturvana Maya Krishna created that. But it's 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 covered. It's covered. It need it needs that's why Prabhupada says the spiritual master and the leader should evaluate. And that's part of their responsibility to their disciples and, and followers to evaluate. This person's working under my care, how best to you engage them where they make progress in devotional service like that. Yeah, you're right. You're 100% correct. Your nature will follow you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It can gradually change through education, evaluation, and Krishna consciousness. Yes, so, Garangi. Uh, Maharaj, theoretically it's wonderful. Uh, practically speaking, we see, okay, the temple needs this one, this one, that, there's no consideration. You got to fill up the hole and make somebody a pujari even if they're not qualified uh, already. So it seems that the organizational needs, they, they're always, especially in temples where there's hardly anybody, there's no personal consideration of what's good for the devotee. There's not what? Huh? I, I missed that last sentence, they're not. What? There's no personal. really consideration of what the uh, devotee person needs or is yeah, able to do. Yeah, there was a paper written many, many years ago by one devotee named Subhananda. He said, we put, we put the, the temples before the devotees. But if we want to be successful, 
And now, of course, now we're moving forward with the, this, the devotee care system, which is somewhat of an aspect of an ashram. It's actually the Kshatriya part, taking care or giving the chance for the devotees to fulfill their needs and so they can be happily engaged in devotional service. Yeah, devotees first. The, the quality of our society is the quality of the devotees in the society, not our temples or how much money we have or how much land we present. It's the devotees that make up Krishna consciousness like that. These other things are simply gifts by Krishna by the eff efforts of, of those who perform devotional service so we can spread Krishna consciousness. But it's all about devotees. Yeah, thank you. Mother Mahalakshmi? Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, you mentioned, uh, she, um, this lady was mentioning that, uh, and you said that our nature always follows us. So how do we transform this nature, I mean the shadow nature, into well, you, our real nature? We have, we just, just may, when we speak about things that are favorable to devotional service, then you can talk about your nature. Things that are unfavorable, you don't want to cultivate. <laughs> you know, things that are in or activities and a consciousness that is conducive to the mode of passion or ignorance. Like that. So, yeah, engage it in devotional service on a, in a regulated way. As you do that, you purify both the activity and your consciousness. Both become transcendental. Because anything in devotional service burns up any negativity. Like that. If it's done in the proper consciousness. And proper consciousness means as a service to the Lord, the service to the Vaishnavas. Like that. But everyone is good by nature. It's just that when we come in contact with the material energy. That's all. I mean, there's people who have the fighting spirit. They have that Kshatriya spirit. Now, if it's not trained and guided and engaged in, in devotional service, it'll come out in another way. I've seen it. <laughs> it comes out in a very ugly way like that. So, yeah. So that's the business of our society to help establish this evaluation system which is the basis of the Van Ashram College and then training accordingly like that. Yeah. Any more questions? Yes. We got... It. Okay, well... I think we have a little time. How much time do I have left? Huh? Fifteen more minutes. I got one minute and fifteen. Let's see, that's, uh, that's seven and a half if we take the, the middle. Yes, next question. Oh, Mataji, okay. I was just remembering one um, episode in this regard, the discussion. One, uh, I don't remember the name, one person joined to steal Prabhupada's watch and uh, he became devotee. Yeah. And then he said Prabhupada that Prabhupada, you and me are the two people who are awake in the night. What should I do? Ch Ch Chandanacharya, his name was. Yeah. So Prabhupada oh, oh, told... Oh, no, no, this was somebody else. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah. So... He was from Bombay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, go ahead. So he, he used to be awake in the night. So he told Prabhupada, what should I do? You and me are the two people who are awake in the night because I had the habit of stealing. Mm -hmm. So I cannot sleep in the night. So Prabhupada said, there are dogs who are barking in the night and I'm translating. They're disturbing me. So you keep them shut. This is your job. So yeah. This is how he advanced. Yeah, so he gave, he gave him a chance to use his tendency in Krishna consciousness like that. Okay, so there's... I know there's more questions. I need a, somebody tell me what to do here. <laughs> I need some guidance here. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna. 
Uh, Maharaj, we are reading uh, instructions from uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, like a clear instructions that until we are elevated to the spontaneous uh, loving service, to the stage of bhava, yeah, yeah. we must follow Varnasram, yeah. accepting the holy name as the shelter and living and practicing the Vaidhi Bhakti under Varnasram, strictly under Varnasram system. Otherwise, uh, Vaidhi Bhakti cannot be uh, practiced properly. Yes. That's in Shiksha, Chaitanya Shikshamrita. Bhakti Vinodha, of course, speaks a lot about the foundations for Van Ashram in there. If a person, for example, if a person needs to find a partner in life, and they're also a devotee and are engaged in devotional service, that becomes a, a concern where one cannot practice devotional service enthusiastically with their mind fixed because that need needs to be taken care of, fulfilled. So that's where the Van Ashram sister comes in, to help support the, the, the material needs, which are the basis of giving persons a foothold, a nice foothold in devotional service. So this is a long subject, and we can talk about it forever. <laughs> uh, but read this verse from the seventh canto, chapter 11, Verses 8 through 12, the, tw the 30 items which make up the foundation for developing the Van Ashram system, spoken by Narada Muni. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.